Hello, Eorzeans! I'm Lukeel Bravestone, and welcome to Remnants of a Realm. In the previous episode, we looked back at Kurtha's Central Lowlands and Caravan Escort missions. As Stalamud made its descent on Eorzea and ending the Sixth Astral Era, Thandalon would see massive destruction. Comparing 1.0's Thandalon to a Realm Reborn's version makes that very, very clear. The most visibly damaged and unrecognizable area in Thandalon is Western Thandalon. Previously, I've covered Vesper Bay and the Silver Bazaar, who both survived the Calamity, but that's not the focus of today's episode. Today, I want to talk about the other areas within Western Thandalon, mainly Horizon, or Camp Horizon. Camp Horizon marked the center of commerce and travel in the region, as the Silver Bazaar had seen better days and was, well, more or less about to collapse. Being the only camp in the region, it naturally supplied players with a mender, merchant, battle warden, and of course, the etherite. The caravan security mission would start at Camp Horizon and follow a set route to the Silver Bazaar, supplying the hamlet with supplies that could be used in a hamlet defense. The camp was directly connected to the Royal Allegan Sunway, making it a very easy camp to find. The area itself was called Horizon's Edge, but people would often just call it Horizon for simplicity's sake, and so the full name fell out of use in the common tongue, and the full name would therefore only appear on the official maps. In patch 1.18, the overworld themes for Lenosha, the Black Shroud, and Thanalan changed for no apparent reason. Before patch 1.18, Thanalan's main theme was called Twilight over Thanalan, and sounded like this. After patch 1.18, Thanalan's main theme was inexplicably changed to Withershins. Widdershins. Did you know that means counterclockwise? Thanks, Mala. That's my new favorite word. Horizon's three ethereal gate connections made most of the region accessible, except for this annoying spot right here, which of course had to be a quest location more than once. God, I hated this place. Anyways, I'm getting ahead of myself. The Footfalls was one of these ethereal gates. The Footfalls was a geographical location in Western Thanalan close to the old coffer and coffin. The area consisted of two levels, the upper level being a rock cover held up by giant pillars. The rock cover was filled with giant gaps which gave the place its name as locals believed these gaps were made by giants walking through the area. The lower level was simple wetlands that could be traversed and was where you'd find most of the leave quest monsters. This was also how you'd access Vesper Bay, or well, sorry, <laughs> which is called the fairy docks at the time. Any monsters you'd encounter in Thanalan would prompt this battle theme called Quicksand. Next up, we have Scorpion Keep. This was located in one of the notorious copy-paste caves of Thanalan. 
the area had absolutely nothing going on inside other than the fact that it was filled with some high-level monsters. It was also the location of several leave quests. Well, actually, there was one interesting tidbit. To access Scorpion Keep, you couldn't just walk to one of the mountain entrances because, well, <laughs> there, 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 there were none. Instead, you had to walk to the very south of the footfalls and enter a cave there. It was a pretty long walk and the first time I walked inside there, I, I thought I was about to enter a dungeon, but <laughs> boy was I disappointed. It's just Little Alamigo, except Little Alamigo is on the total opposite side of Thanalan, so it's just an empty shell. 1.0 design. Mwah. Beautiful. Next up, we have Nauficus Wells, and while the name sounds pretty, the location is all but that. Where Scorpion Keep took you inside one of the copy-paste mountain cave things, Nauficus Wells put you between three of them. However, this location is not special because of its surroundings, but because it was the prime location for a very special quest. What quest? It kills with fire. This was the quest where you'd come face to face with Ifrit. It was also the quest that would introduce you to Louis Swa and Nail Van Darnus. The quest giver was whatever grand company you were aligned with, Maelstrom, Twin Adders or Immortal Flames, and Louis Swa level you would serve as your guide, which he would continue to do until the very end. In order to unlock the fight, you first had to kill six notorious monsters, a system I will explain more in depth at a later time. The NMs you had to kill were Baromets, Slippery Sykes, Nest Commander, Pirausta, Queen Bolette, and the Jack and Apes. Upon killing these, they would drop Echo Crystals, which was needed to progress. Using these crystals, Louis Swa managed to create a harmonizing crystal, an object that granted the bearer entry into the Bowl of Embers, Ifrit's Sanctuary. However, another item is required, the Inferno Flamebow a sacred relic owned by the Amalja Void Tongue, Azab Ka. Upon defeating him, you return to Luiswa and deliver the flame bow. The fight itself was not very hard and required a party of four to enter. After defeating the primal, you'd be treated to this cutscene.
this quest chain would eventually lead to the game's very last quest, covered in a previous episode. After the calamity, most of Western Sunderland's landmass disappeared into the sea. Largely unnamed masses seemed to have disappeared, trimming the once fat Western Sunderland into this strange shape. Scorpion Keep is completely gone, but the name lives on in Scorpion Crossing. Nofika's Wells has changed location slightly and now actually looks more like a well than in 1.0. Footfalls' upper level, most of it collapsed during the calamity and in the chaos that ensued, ruins rose up from the ground. Camp Horizon's fate is somewhat unclear, but it's safe to assume that it survived and was built upon until it became a full-on settlement like it is today. Western Sandalon geographically makes very little sense as Uldar now connects directly to it, while the original map had Uldar placed rather far away from it. And with that we've reached the end of this episode. Thank you so much for watching. Special thanks to our lovely Patreon supporters scrolling on screen right now. Let me know in the comments what you think about the stuff we talked about in this episode and leave a like if you enjoyed and remember subscribe for more. And as always, may you ever walk in the light of the crystal.